This conference will now be recorded. We'll call this uh, council man to order. Would you stand as able and join me in this invocation this evening? Dear Lord and Father of all, we come to you this evening to ask your guidance as the mayor, administrator, staff, and the Sedalia City Council meet to discuss and make decisions for the betterment of our community and its citizens. We are thankful for their dedication and service. We also now ask protection for all of our first responders, police, fire, sheriff, EMTs, hospital staff, and all who work for our benefit, putting their own lives in danger. Bless them as they continue their difficult tasks. We are grateful for our military who serve throughout the world to protect our country and who for 250 years have sacrificed life and limb to create and to preserve our constitutional republic. And tonight too, we especially ask your blessing and service recognition of Lisa Bell, who is retiring from Sedalia Water Department after over 30 years service. She will be greatly missed by the city and we wish her very well in, in her retirement. And now as we leave tonight, please protect us and our loved ones, keeping us from harm until we meet again. All this we ask in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Lehman? Here. Oldham? Here. Dawson? Here. Foggers is absent. Richardson? Here. Cross? Here. Foster? Here. And Bliss is absent. No, you're no, 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 online. I'm sorry. We've got a beautiful mugshot of Do I see him now? Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Now we have a special award tonight. Uh, Lisa Bell, could you come forward to the board, please? Please stand with Sarah. Everybody is on forever. Lisa, when she was a young lady, she used to work for me in my restaurant. Mm -hmm. She started working when you were. Thank you. 
All right. Take the word is that you've never paid him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so we have a, a motion to approve the minutes from City Council meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So we have a uh, uh, unfinished business. Chairman Andrew Dawson. If you remember, on uh, June 7th, 2021, we had a meeting where we tabled an ordinance vacating the alley behind the Liberty Center. Uh, there was a property sale that occurred that we did not know about, so we needed to adjust that ordinance to reduce it by 22 feet. Uh, and then also there were a couple other kinks that need to be worked out, so we're bringing it back here tonight. Any council discussion? I do understand that there has been a combined meeting and has been resolved and we're good to go. Yeah. Call for the ordinance. Bill number 2021-91, an ordinance vacating the east-west alley between property located at 111 West 4th, 5th Street and 108 West 6th Street and retaining permanent easements, utility easements through the alley in favor of the existing utilities. Second reading. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Bill number 2021-91, an ordinance vacating the east-west alley between property located at 111 West 5th Street and 108 West 6th Street and retaining permanent utility easements through the alley in favor of the existing utilities. Final passage. Second. Roll call, please. Lehman? Yes. Oldham? Yes. Dawson? Yes. Bogus is absent. Richardson? Yes. Cross? Yes. Foster? Yes. Bliss? Yes. Uh, seven yes and one absent. That's all the unfinished business I have, Your Honor. Mm. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, we need a motion for the approval of the Stark Advisory Board. So moved. All in favor? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Finance Administration, uh, Steve Liss. Would a program take that? It doesn't matter. I don't know. Okay. Steve? I was going to ask you. You guys handle it there. Grant, I'll take it. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So, we Rand, need to speak. Grant, would you pull your mic down? Is that better? Yep. Okay. So, first off, we are going to get a financial update from Ms. Dawn, please. You did promise a good one last night. Yes, it is good. <laughs> well, as you can see, the sales tax is actually up 33, almost 33% from last year. It is just astronomical. Kelvin and I had to check and double check the numbers a couple of times, and it's it's real. Um, without the consideration of the park sales tax, we would be up 27.5%, still quite hefty for this time of the year. Um, for the total of the month, if you take parks out of the equation, it's 19.3% up as total overall of the, the tax revenue. Fiscal year to date, if you take the parks additional sales tax revenue out of both last year and this year, we're up 17.2% in sales tax and 14.5% overall tax for the year. So. Just amazing news. And again, again uh, remember our budget here, we uh, a budget two percent, mm -hmm. and uh, just also to put it in perspective, this is really April fail. So if you remember, last year was the, April was the month that was essentially everything was shut down, with the exception of like Walmart and the home improvement stores. Um, and then this year, uh, there was a lot of stimulus money that was floating around. So we're thinking that that's the big difference is because even though last year was down a little bit, we weren't down a whole lot, this is way above even 2019 or previous year. So it's, uh, it's hopefully it's hopefully it's safe, but uh, it's a sign that the economy is doing very well here. Well, I can't remember that April 
was steadily higher than we anticipated. Right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You might want to be a little cautious because, I mean, the prices, like we'll see later on in the meeting, the prices of everything is increasing substantially. Yeah. Interesting to watch, but way to start the year. Yeah. Is there any factors that really are attributable to these use taxes that are dropping a bit? Um, my belief is, is just, I mean, uh, use taxes are so construction dependent, and uh, although it's down a foot, uh, significantly from the previous year that month. Uh, if you look, it's, it's really, uh, that's more of a normal line, in my opinion, on, on where we were. Uh, I'm trying to remember it was 20, uh, either 2018 and 2019 numbers are very close. The last two years, and especially the last year, you know, we were, we were up to 148. Which not not uh, I mean I didn't work in the details of who it was from but uh, but normal normal will the Wayfair tax in the future have a separate line or will that will that be included in one of these Wayfair Wayfair it will be included in the use tax, Wayfair. 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 Use tax. Uh, but, uh, that isn't, that hasn't, that's, hasn't that's down the road. Yeah, I know that's down the road. I, that's a, yeah. 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 Still something to look forward to, though. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, it'll come to the end as, as uh, you said. Right. Any other questions, Adele? Keep up the good work. The audience is It's in the home chat. Yeah. Last few pieces of paper. <laughs> Thank you, Don. Now, the second item we have this evening is we would like to hear from uh, Shannon Ramey Troll, the Human Resources Director, um, a presentation regarding strategies for improvement on human resources. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> okay, so our personal policies work session. Um, the purpose of this work session today is to review with council. Um, you know what, what we're like. Excuse me. What we're wanting to do with the personnel policies, the direction that we would like to go in, and gain your support and direction as well, so that we're all on the same page going forward. And I did want to point out a little caveat to that as well. Um, these are ideas and recommendations. We don't necessarily have everything specifically, you know, um, vetted out just yet. So there may be some questions that you know come up that we haven't quite worked out the specific details to a specific policy. So. so what we're looking to change in the personnel policies is to update the policies to include a more friendlier, inviting tone, a little bit, be a little bit more welcoming, but of course firm where we still need to be as far as in policies with anti-harassment, discipline, termination. Um, broaden the language is to not paint ourselves into a corner. I've noticed when we're reviewing a lot of our personal policies that does that, it doesn't really give us a lot of room to make any changes or, you know, modifications if, if needed to a certain, certain area. Of course, re review and ensure that all policies are up to date um, as far as current practice as well as federal and state laws. Um, we'd like to look at separating policy from procedure and creating a um, separate procedures manual um, for staff um, that gives, of course, a lot more detail, whereas that way we can actually make a policy manual that instead of it being, I think it's 100 plus pages, again, make it more friendlier to the employees so they can just go in and see what it is that they're looking for. And then, of course, you know, eliminate bureaucracy uh, where we're prudent. Um, policies that we would like to modify, add or add, <laughs> we would like to um, look at updating our drug testing policy, our pre-employment background checks, um, performance review process, um, like to look at making it more of a merit-based process instead of what it currently is, um, looking to create a paid time off policy versus having our vacation, sick leave and holidays separate. And then we would actually like to look at the addition of a volunteer off policy, which would be something that would be completely new to the city. So in regards to drug testing, what we would actually like to look to add, or change rather, is um, the addition of swab testing. So 
what this would do is this would help with our pre-employment process, post-accident random drug testing. This, of course, would not include our CVL drivers because they are, um, you know, <clears throat> have separate requirements that a swab test wouldn't necessarily um, be prudent for. This will help us speed up, hopefully, our hiring process. Right now, some of the things that we're looking at is that, you know, the time frame between an employee is able to go in, if there's any issues. Sometimes weather-related issues can cause, you know, a specimen not to get to the testing side. You know, so we can look at anywhere from sometimes five to, to 14 days to get drug testing results back on a new hire. Um, limit the time spent at a doctor's office for any non-medical post-accident testing. And of course, limit the employee's time away from work during our random screenings. We do do those quarterly, and we usually test about 20 employees at a time. And so again, having them away from work can sometimes, you know, it takes time away from obviously the city and the projects that they're working on. Uh, the cost per test, if we choose to go in this direction, would be reduced. Currently for a drug test, we're looking at anywhere from 41 to $45. I've been able to price a couple different swabbing options, and they're anywhere from about $10 to $12 per test. And then, of course, if an employee does test positive, you know, we wouldn't necessarily base it off the swab test. We would take the step, have them go for a urine drug screening before we made any employment decision. Um, Pre-employment background checks. So currently what our process is to date is we utilize a few different, few different sites, um, mocks, which is uh, through the highway, Missouri Highway Patrol, uh, CaseNet, and as well as our insurance broker provides our motor vehicle reports for us. Um, Missouri Highway Patrol is only able to give us information that, of course, is Missouri-based, as well as CaseNet. Um, the other concern with CaseNet sometimes is that it can be seen as unreliable because you're usually doing a name search. It's not necessarily based off a of social security number or date of birth. So, you know, as we all know, some people have similar names, same names, and it's hard to really kind of di differentiate if you're looking at case nets. And then our MVR results are currently not actually provided to us. Typically what we receive from our insurance carrier is whether a driver is acceptable or not, which can cause actually some issues or pose some issues for us when it comes to the Fair Reporting Credit Act. So. So what we would like to propose or recommend moving forward is looking um, to expand our background check option. Um, so currently for the process that I just described, we're paying $15.25. Um, if we went ahead and went with a more extensive background check that includes all of this, so social security number check, um, na na nationwide criminal check, government watch list, national sex offender registry, county and federal criminal checks, the cost of the background check would go up um, basically 50% to $30.50 a check. Now that doesn't inc include the cost of the MVR, which unfortunately there's a whole sheet on it. It varies by state, so each state depends on what the cost is. To run an MVR for the state of Missouri is $5, um, but it can be anywhere from $5 to $13 depending on the state. And then some background check companies do actually give you the optional monitoring of MVRs for um, your CDL drivers. So that way if you know your CDL driver has some sort of an incident during the year prior to you checking the actual MVR on them, it'll notify you to let you know that hey there's there's been an incident and you may want to review it or your CDL driver <coughs> no longer has a valid license. Our performance review process, um, as mentioned, we'd like to look at going more towards a merit-based system. Um, we do know that currently Either way, we need to update our, our evaluation process and um, our forms. It's more of a user-friendly for not only the manager, but also for the employee. Currently, right now, for all of our employees, we have one evaluation form. I would like to look at us having at least a minimum of three. Um, in my opinion, when it comes to employee evaluations, it's not a you know one-size-fits-all. Um, you need some criteria specifically for managers specifically for your professional workforce, and then of course your, you know, your field personnel all need to, you know, look at having different criteria. Um, as mentioned, of course, by moving towards a more merit-based system, we believe this would allow the department heads <coughs> um, a little bit more flexibility to be able to properly incentivize our high performers. Um, so a couple potential options that we would like to just 
throw out there or discuss is starting with our non-public um, safety employees. There's a, you know, a separate group of employees or general employees. We would like to look at maintaining our current min and max on our pay plan and allowing department heads, like I said, the flexibility either when hiring based on qualifications or performance adjust pay accordingly, of course, while all taking into consideration budget requirements and restrictions. Um, our paid time off, um, look at merging sick leave, vacation, as well as holidays all into one accrual. Um, we believe that this would allow for some more flexibility when it comes to utilizing leave for employees, um, potentially give a little bit more of a better work-life balance. It would give employees that are required to work holidays the option to um, either observe a different holiday or observe a different day, or if you have an employee that would rather, you know, observe a different holiday, it would give them that option to do so. Look at the potential to cash in, um, have cash in options or lifting maximum accruals, and it rewards our dependable employees. I mean, we all know that, you know, some employees are very fortunate and never get sick or their kids never get sick, and so this would give them a little bit more time to utilize, you know, somewhere else for vacations or mental health days. Um, and this would hopefully avoid the use it or lose it mentality, but of course, again, to make sure we have that work-life balance, balance, we would encourage employees to utilize their time off as we know that time away from work is important. And then last but not least, um, look at the potential of a volunteer off policy. This would give employees the option to take a set amount of time off, whether it's we determine it's a day, half a day, a couple days. Um, to work on an annual basis to volunteer for either a credible charity that we outline or um, a city-sponsored charity or event. This policy has the potential to attract and retain employees that are very passionate about giving back to our community. It allows employees, again, that work-life balance that everybody is really, really looking to have. And it also allows employees to engage in the local community and participate in the social good. What questions or comments does anybody have? I don't have any questions. I'd like to, would you forward this presentation to our email? Absolutely. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Thank you. I'm comfortable with the directions. Yeah, I think part of this discussion came up when we in January when we last two years we've kind of moved mm -hmm. towards this merit thing that we've been kind of been doing about quite a while. So thank you, Jen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The last item that I have tonight is um, an ordinance approving the sale of real estate between the City of Sedalia and Fresnel Investments, uh, 202 through 210 South Ohio, um, and a portion of 201 South Osage. And uh, we've talked about this a lot, I think, and I think this is an awesome project. Um, as for the public private partnership agreement adopted in April, has to the portion of the properties at Second Ohio are to be transferred to for now investment. The due diligence period called for and the agreement has run its course with the survey and title insurance being obtained. So the next step is to issue the deed. Uh, staff recommends approval of a specific ordinance to approve the conveyance of title for recording with the deed. We're excited to push this project forward and get construction started as soon as possible on this pavilion, outdoor event space, and the adjacent shelter with Rutherford. Uh, as we discussed, this will be an important piece to the continued development of our downtown district. And through the partnership, we will be able to spread tax dollars further, providing more benefit to the public. A uh, point of clarification for the benefit of the public. Uh, for now, and, uh, companies will be paying property tax on the property as well as the improvements, correct? Yes, it will be. Uh, uh, right now, it's city held, so it's tax exempt. Uh, as soon as it transfers ownership, this is to become private ownership, so they will accept the property. Great. And I think, uh, correctly, did you kind of get an announcement that was going to be a significant? Yeah, 
I did. It would, yeah, it was a fairly significant amount of money that we'd recover from that. Yeah, Call for the ordinance. Bill number 2021-92, an ordinance approving the sale of real estate between the City of Sedalia, Missouri, and Fresnel Investments Incorporated, a Missouri corporation doing business as the Fresnel Companies for the sale and disposal of property located at 202 to 210 South Ohio Avenue and a portion of 201 South Osage Avenue in the city of Sedalia, Missouri, including the approval of a special warranty deed. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Bill number 2021-92, an ordinance approving the sale of real estate between the city of Sedalia, Missouri and Fresnel Investments Incorporated a Missouri corporation doing business as the Fresnel Companies for the sale and disposal of property located at 202 to 210 South Ohio Avenue and a portion of 201 South Osage Avenue in the city of Sedalia, Missouri, including the approval of a special warranty deed. Final Second. Okay. Okay. Or call, please. Oldham? Yes. Dawson? Yes. Bogus is absent. Richardson? Yes. Cross? Yes. Foster? Yes. Bliss? Yes. And Lehman? Yes. That's seven yes and one absent. Thank you. Public Works, come forward. We have four items tonight under the Public Works Committee. Our first item is as presented in the strategic plan for the water department, the water filtration plant utilizes a filtration media that is at the end of its useful life. Explicitly, our Missouri Department of Natural Resources public drinking water permit requires replacement of this filtration media every 20 years. Through the budget process, budgeting process, staff obtain estimated pricing to base the appropriation on. However, as with several items, costs have unexpectedly increased dramatically. This results in the lowest bid for the, de for the delivered and installed product being nearly $50,000 above the capital budget designated for this project. Since this remains an essential part of the system to provide safe and clean water, staff recommends we still need to move forward. Therefore, we recommend a budget amendment to increase the budget for this project to bring the $120,000 budgeted up to the low bid of $169,546.84 and award the contract to such low bid. Any discussion, being that this is a budget amendment, we will have a resolution and an ordinance for the budget amendment, and then we will have a second ordinance for the agreement of the for the agreement. Arlene, will you bring the resolution, please? Yes, resolution 1929, and resolution of the City Council of the City of Today in Missouri, authorizing an increase in budgeted expenditures for the fiscal year 2021-2022 relating to water treatment plant filter media replacement project. Motion to approve. Second. Aye. Aye. Thank you. So, uh, read the ordinance. Yes, uh, the first one is bill number 20-91-93. An ordinance amending the budget for the fiscal year 21-22 regarding water treatment plant filter media replacement project. Second reading. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Bill number 2091-93, an ordinance amending the budget for the fiscal year 2021-2022 regarding water treatment plant filter media replacement project. Final passage. Second. Roll call, please. Dawson? Yes. Bogus is absent. Richardson? Yes. Cross? Yes. Foster? Yes. Bliss? Yes. Lehman? Yes. Oldham? Yes. That's seven yes and one absent. Bill number 20-21-94, an ordinance authorizing an agreement for water filtration plant media replacement. Second reading. Second. All favor? Uh, opposed? Bill number 20-2021-94, an ordinance authorizing an agreement for water filtration plant media replacement. Final passage. Second. Roll call, please. 
Bogus is absent. Richardson? Yes. Cross? Yes. Foster? Yes. Bliss? Yes. Lehman? Yes. Oldham? Yes. Dawson? Yes. Seven yes and one absent. The second item we have tonight is a bid and agreement with FTC Equipment, LLC. The water filtration plant providing drinking water to the community utilizes several high volume pumps. One of these pumps is currently down and another is showing signs of beginning to fail. Replacement of these two pumps was anticipating through the budgeting process and funds were set aside in the capital budgets for such replacement. The low bid came in at $10,801 above the $130,000 budgeted amount. In this case, staff has identified another project from the B that can be delayed to redirect the funding from, the pro from that project to stay within the total capital budgeted line and item. Last meeting, as you recall, council formally rejected the bids of water and of, for water analyzer replacement that were budgeted at $12,000. So redirecting these funds will cover the shortfall to facilitate moving forward with the replacement of these pumps. As you may recall, the sole bid for the water and, uh, and water and analyzer equipment was not acceptable since it was not compatible with the rest of our system. We can and will continue to assure the safety of the water using existing water analyst equipment. Staff recommends approval and award a contract to FPC Equipment LLC for $140,801 to replace pumps identified as number four and number five. Council discussion. Read the orders, please, over. Bill number 2021-95. An ordinance authorizing an agreement for the replacement of high service pumps four and five for the water division. Second reading. Second. Bill number 2021-95. An ordinance authorizing an agreement for the replacement of high service pumps four and five for the water division. Final passage. Second. Roll call, please. Richardson? Yes. Cross? Yes. Foster? Yes. Bliss? Yes. Lehman? Yes. Oldham? Yes. Dawson? Yes. And Bogus is absent, so that's seven yes and one absent. Our third item is for the Autumn Street Extension Survey. Staff has identified an opportunity for road improvement in the area of the Heckert Community Center development. Autumn Avenue is a short street that runs from Liberty Park Boulevard to Spring Street serving only the dozen or so residents on it. Furthermore, neither of these connected streets are through streets. It is just a short distance along Liberty Park Boulevard to Limit Avenue or Park Avenue. However, during the Hecker Community Center construction, access to Limit has been restricted. Likewise, we certainly anticipate an increase in the activity going to and from the Hecker Community Center when it opens. In looking for opportunities for improvement, we identified that Autumn is directly in line with the drive entrance for, for engineering survey and services. Therefore, staff reached out to ES&S to see if they would be willing to work with us to explore options of extending Autumn to connect with Main Street. We worked with them to obtain a proposal to pull this, to pull this project together for further review. So staff recommends approval of the proposed agreement for surveying and engineering services for the extension of Autumn Avenue to Main Street. Council discussion. Uh, so what I understand is when that road is complete on the Main Street, they're able to put house build houses on the east side. What's the zoning? Uh, on, on the east side of Arm. Yeah. You're talking about what? Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, um, what is that, is that clear? That's the, uh, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's the next question. I mean, I, I guess, I don't think it's, they, they, I mean, I guess the potential that they could, that here, is they could sell off part of that lot and build the house there. I, I know of no plans. Yeah, well, yeah. 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 I believe it will be declared behind it and next to the road as a buildable area, but currently it's ES and F that has that access to it. Yeah. And I'm not clear sure. so they would be those west side. That was one of their concerns was the 
be able to build if they wanted to build on or add to their building that we weren't planned on and then our part restricted. And the same is true on the uh, east side with the bed. I don't know. The zoning on that, I'm not clear about that. <coughs> Yeah, then each side, I mean, it, the, the road will be essentially all on the current DSS lot. So it really wouldn't affect this lot at all. Thank you. You know something we don't know? Are you just. Are, are you going to tell me? Are you speculating? Or are you going to tell me something I don't no, know? No, I don't know. I'm just curious. <laughs> all right. Any other questions? Where do you order, please, Bill number 2021 96, an ordinance authorizing an agreement for engineering and survey services for a residential roadway extension. Second reading. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Bill number 2021 96. An ordinance authorizing an agreement for engineering and survey services for a residential roadway extension. Final passage. Second. Roll call, please. Cross? Yes. Foster? Yes. Bliss? Yes. Lehman? Yes. Oldham? Yes. Dawson? Yes. Foggus is absent. And Richardson? Yes. Seven yes and one absent. Our final item for public works is a no charge change order for Flynn Drilling Company. During the May 17th meeting, we approved an agreement with Flynn, Dr Flynn Drilling Company for the rehabilitation of the pump in water well number 15. As the contractor started work on this system, they made a recommendation to install a more common submersible pump instead of rehabilitating the shaft style pump. The submersible pump is an off the shell type item that is more readily available, reducing the lead times and making more making ongoing maintenance more economical. The current style requires the custom main components that are not produced until order creating six to eight week lead times after determining, determining what is needed. Especially during these difficult and unreliable times of procurement, it would be prudent to avoid these specialized components where feasible. The contractor has put a proposal together to replace the current pump equipment with a submersible pump within the same cost as they, as they bid for the rehabilitation of the old pump. With a shorter lead time, the vendor will be able to complete the job sooner to get this important piece of water delivery system back in service prior to the anticipated peak demand of the summer. So staff recommends approval of the change order. It's my understanding that we're going to eventually convert to submersible. Yes, we, um, we want to do this wherever possible as, as the old, uh, what is it, 1958 pump or something like that. It's, it's, a, it's an old pump. So uh, as these come down, we'd, we'd like to do this, which would make it um, a whole lot more manageable, I guess, as going forward, because then we can have a commercial pump on the shelf, so to speak. And when one goes down, we can just basically plug and play and go on. So, what did I miss there? I think it's great numbers, but it's throwing stuff at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, so, uh, and, and basically reduce the lead times, get more things more standardized, and so uh, uh, we can have common parts and those kinds of things and, and inventory on, on, uh, on hand. So, I miss anything, Brenda? Will the the four and five that we just mentioned in the second or uh, the second item type will those have submersible pumps as well? No, those are different kinds of pumps. Those are different yeah. altogether. Okay. Those are um, what they call high volume or high service pumps that are or above so. ground. They're basically just pumped it through the, the through the filtration plant, as opposed to this is a submersible pump in the well at Bridge Water. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Arlene, read your orders, please. Bill number 2021-97, an ordinance authorizing change order number one for a submersible pump installation located at water well number 15. Second reading. Second. All in favor? 
Bill number 2021-97, an ordinance authorizing change order number one for submersible pump installation located at water well number 15. Final passage. Second. Roll call, please. Foster? Yes. Bliss? Yes. Lehman? Yes. Oldham? Yes. Dawson? Yes. August is absent. Richardson? Yes. Cross? Yes. Seven yes and one absent. Thank you. Thomas? That's all I have. Thank you. Andrew, development? Uh, the ordinance you have before you amends Chapter 10, uh, Articles 10, dealing with property maintenance, and Articles 11, dealing with dangerous buildings and conditions. Uh, over the past couple of months, Community Development Committee, uh, with the city attorney, prosecutor, and staff have gone through those, kind of taken a hard look at them and seen where we could uh, streamline the process add clarity, uh, remove some circular language, and uh, uh, remove the variability. So everything is kind of consistent. So I'm going to go through the admin memo and just take these uh, step or bullet point by bullet point, A through M, uh, and just read them here. Yard growth shall be maintained at uh, less than six inches, previously eight, and often with the current level set at eight inches. By the time we provide the necessary notice period, scheduled abatement, and get the property mowed, it is in essence out of control, making it difficult to mow, and even after it is mowed, it looks bad. Further, through this process, we've learned that for those that we unfortunately have to mow multiple times in a season, we have to provide a 10-day notice period each time it is mowed. By reducing the height at which we start the process, it will help in these situations. Uh, and then B, which is in relation to that, Related to the above discussion, we reduce the notice period before we can start the abatement process from 15 days to 10, which is in accordance with the statutes. Further, the notice period is not required for the issuance of a citation or violation, just the abatement process. Uh, bullet point C, added sections to prohibit odors, stenches, require the dis uh, appropriate disposal of dead animals, and prohibit water pollution. Uh, he clarifies and codifies the process for sending an invoice to the property owner for the cost of the abatement. He clarifies the use of proactive measures for achieving compliance. If you looked at our code of ordinances before this, uh, it called out to where everything was basically, our code enforcement was reactive. You can't do that. That, that, that doesn't work. You have to do combined proactive and reactive code enforcement to have any type of, uh, make any type of difference out there. Uh, let's see, uh, let me get back on point. Point F, clarifies and standardizes the notice and abatement process. Uh, G, the definition of what constitutes a public nuisance structure was modified for when construction is stopped for more than 30 days. Subsequent to notice being given, reduced from 90. Also, when a building has been condemned as unfit for human habitation upon which no substantial work has been performed to remedy the situation for 14 days subsequent to notice being given reduced from 90. Uh, H, clarified and eliminated the circular reference in the notice requirements for declaration of a public nuisance structure. Uh, I, changed and clarified the process for service for notification of dangerous buildings process. Provides options for personal service or certified mail clarifies, streamlines, and shortens the notice by publication process previously required uh, four weeks of publication of full text of the violation with notice of hearing not less than 45 days after publication. State statute only requires the publication of the notice of hearing once with a minimum of a 10-day notice period. Reduces the time after notice of violation that a hearing can be held with the Board of Appeals from 21 days to 10 days per state statute. Point K clarifies that a court reporter for the hearings with the Board of Appeals may be used but is not required. Uh, point L allows staff to assist in the documentation of Board of, board of Appeals facts and findings. And then point M eliminates the posting requirement for the Board of Appeals uh, findings of facts. So uh, that, that's a lot. We worked and 
had a lot of spent a lot of time going round and round about that, and I think we came up to something that's uh, reasonable for everybody. And I appreciate your persistence and diligence. Yeah. Staff, great job. Yeah. It's much needed. Yeah. Any other questions from Kevin? On that radio order, please. Bill number 2021-98, an ordinance amending Section 10, Property Maintenance, and Section 11, Dangerous Buildings and Conditions of Chapter 10, Buildings and Building Regulations of the City of Sedalia, Missouri. Second reading. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Bill number 2021-98, an ordinance amending Section 10, Property Maintenance, and Section 11, Dangerous Buildings and Conditions of Chapter 10, Buildings and Building Regulations of the City of Sedalia, Missouri. Final passage. Second. Roll call, please. Bliss? Yes. Lehman? Yes. Oldham? Yes. Dawson? Yes. Bogus is absent. Richardson? Yes. Cross? Yes. And Foster? Yes. Seven yes and one absent. Okay, we have one new license this evening and six renewals. The new license is for Marcio Limas doing business to State Fair Floral at 520 South Ohio for a packaged liquor and liquor by the drink license. The renewals are for Brent Eaton Jones doing business as Jiffy Stop Food Mart number 591 located at 1722 West Broadway, packaged liquor and Sunday sales. Andriana Thorns doing business as Applebee's Bar and Grill at 3320 West Broadway for liquor by the drink and Sunday sales. Alan Whittle doing business as Sedalia Elks Lodge number 125 at 320 South Kentucky, liquor by the drink and Sunday sales license. Kathy Getz doing business as break time number 3083 at 808 East Broadway for a Sunday sales license. Kathy Getz doing business as break time number 3084 at 318 West Broadway for Sunday sales license. And Kathy Getz doing business as break time number 3079, 2801 West Broadway for Sunday sales. Motion to approve the block. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Anybody from the council like to make a few kind of words tonight? Um, well, first of all, I just wanted to make sure everybody has a happy and safe uh, 4th of July and just kind of given a little bit of a preview. We are, uh, as you all know, we've, we've worked on the branding and getting our story put together and those kinds of things. So we have uh, worked with Callison Association and, we're, uh, and the Parks and Rec Department and we're working on uh, essentially trying to uh, push that project forward and do a little bit of a, a splash or start getting the story out there during two uh, pretty important events coming up. Of course, first of all, Independence Day, the 4th of July celebration, and the picnic at the park, so to speak, as well as the state fair. So um, we got things coming up for that and just wanted to, to kind of uh, get everybody in the group or a little bit to, to get out there and see what's going on. The chair, Jay, will respond for the prayer. Okay. What was, what was that? Jay, will respond for the prayer. Is it there? Yeah, that's right. And also, uh, we have a technique at the, at the park. Mm -hmm. We all need volunteers, so usually a lot of city council comes out and volunteers. You cooking? A lot of the county. Are you going to cook?
So a fool gave in and quit the public life. It's a good band. I understand. Uh, Seaport was there with his uh, crew. The fire chief was there. Uh, the fire department. Chief Harold was there. That's okay. We had some great basketball that evening, too. Did you, did you know you could do it? Huh? No. Yeah. 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 Park looked great. Do we good. have that on film? I missed that. Uh, you know, uh, I'd have to charge you for that. Flash <laughs> band open. It's been a great event. Flash band. That flash pad will be phenomenal. At the picnic at the park, we would like someone to volunteer the stakes for the help. Thanks for the help. You're volunteering that, Bob? Good luck. Good luck. Anybody from the uh, audience would like to make the two kind words? Well, no, it's coming you forward. Let them know, Bob. Are you coming up to say hello? Thank you. I'm sure everybody knows Mr. Cool. First, I would like to apologize. I would just got uh, addressed. One of the gentlemen said he did not recognize me without my suit on. <laughs> <laughs> to our honorable mayor, to the members of the city council and all friends that are here, within workers of Sedalia and those that are interested. I stand before you tonight, especially you, Mr. Mayor, and members of the city council, and to any of the members of the Park and Recreation Committee, if you are here this evening, to personally thank you for your donations, for your time, for your opportunity to Help celebrate the Juneteenth celebration. So Delia made history Saturday. That was the first Juneteenth celebration after the signing of the bill. So I want to personally acknowledge each and every one of you for being there, for coming out, for being involved. I want to also thank our police department, fire department, uh, I believe representatives uh, from the, the commission, I believe commission, I believe was there, and there were others there. I might be getting, forgetting some that, that, that attended, but it, all in all, it was a great celebration. I think each and every one of you enjoyed being there with us. And to, I just want to say to you, we're looking to be, become bigger, and better, because the more we work together, the better we will improve our city of Sedalia, and we will, we will all grow as one. So I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to adjourn to closed door session. In accordance to subsections one, legal advice, and subsection two, real estate. Second. Okay. Uh, Aye. Roll call, please, Lily. Lehman? Yes. Oldham? Yes. Dawson? Yes. Marcus is absent. Richardson? Yes. Cross? Yes. Foster? Yes. And Bliss? Yes. Let's take up here, please. This conference will now be recorded. Okay, I'm up. <laughs> hey. Uh, where's the pink hat? I, she took it back. <laughs> she wanted a closed session, and I wouldn't let her. Go, go back into a regular yeah. session. Second. That was her. Roll call, please. Lehman? Here. Oldham? Here. Dawson? Here. August is absent. Um, Richardson? Here. Cross? Here. Foster? Here. And Bliss? Here. Okay. Uh, staff recommends that uh, uh, we reject all of the three proposals that we received for the, as a result of our requested proposal for the sale of 111 West 4th Street. 
uh, also known as the old water, water department office building. And uh, so staff is making that recommendation to reject all bids. So motion to reject any and all bids for the West Fourth. Second. Whatever that address turns out to properties. Roll call, please. Okay. Lehman. Uh, Do you need a roll call on that? Yes. No, we don't. Uh, I just take a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. Motion to adjourn. Right. Yeah. Roll call, please. No. All in favor? We actually don't even have to do a vote on that. Okay. I'd just like to do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're the boss. <laughs> Bye, Steve. See you guys. Have a great vacation. Thank you. I Dave. am. We we have, we're having fun. See you later. Yeah. We, I pulled all the care. Of this conference will now be recorded. I think John was getting a lick in, but I missed it. I'll get even when I get home. <laughs>